Say, kids, what time is it? <laughs> Well, howdy, doody, kids, and howdy, Buffalo Bob. Well, howdy there, Mr. Doody, and boys and girls at home and all my kids in the gallery, let's go. Yeah. And boys and girls, and howdy doody from our friends, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Yes, sir, kids, we're all ready to do the Kellogg's Rice Krispies March. So let's go! Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right into the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, Crackle, Pop. Mmm, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep. So come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Mmm, <laughs> Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do. Then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Mmm, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Oh, yes, sir, kids. It's fun to eat Kellogg's Rice Krispies. In all the world, there's only one talking cereal. And boy, it's good for you, too. So you join in the fun, kids, and get in on the happy parade to the breakfast table for Kellogg's Rice Krispies. That a boy, howdy. Well, now, kids, it's time to show you the biggest joke of the year. Yes, sir, kids, Phineas T. Bluster's joke. Oh, yes, sir, kids, you know, once again, Mr. Buster thought that he could fool us. And once again, boy, he was wrong. Now, Mr. Buster still doesn't know that we found out the truth about his grandmother. But, ho, ho, kids, here it is. Ah, uh, yes, sir, howdy and kids. Now, just look over here. Now, all this week, you know, Mr. Bluster has been giving out pictures of Grandma Bluster. Now, I really should say he's been trading pictures because, you see, kids, Clarabelle had to give Mr. Buster 25 seltzer bottles in exchange for the picture. Oh, and also, Mr. Bluster, you see, he, he didn't have room to hide the bottles. So the Flub-a-Dub, Flub hid 10 bottles. And in exchange for the picture, of course. And then, too, Flub-a-Dub Jr. hid five of the bottles in exchange for a picture, of course. And Mr. Buster was all ready to give out more pictures yesterday. When I found out the truth, kids, I saw the picture in this book, and now we know that Grandma Bluster is not Grandma Bluster. It's the Whistler's mother. Oh, yes, right? sir, kids. Now, you can see the two pictures are exactly alike. Oh, and kids, about 70 years ago, a wonderful artist named James Whistler painted this portrait of his mother. And, well, it has become one of the most famous paintings of all time. And you know, Buffalo Bob, yeah, Francis. we better visit the art museums regularly You're right. from now on. Because all of those great paintings are so beautiful to see. I'm embarrassed. And there's plenty to learn, Princess, as we just found out. Oh, boy, that's right. Well, kids, now that we've gone this far, Boy, oh boy, oh boy, next we have to tell Mr. Buster that we figured out his trick and that we have to find out what he wanted those 25 seltzer bottles for. Now, he still has them, you know, kids. <coughs> oh, Francis, there's Mr. Buster now. Kids, we're going to have some fun with him. Now, watch this, kids. Watch, watch, watch. <coughs> Hello, howdy, my boy. Well, hello, hello Mr. Uh, Buster. Uh, oh, well, hello. How are you, my favorite buffalo? Well, I... I mean, my favorite boob. Oh. Oh, no, 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 my favorite bob. Oh, well, I, I'm uh, fine, uh, and I... I like you, too, Mr. Buster. Oh, well, that's you know, nice to know. As a matter of fact, I like you so much... Yes? ...that sometimes I sort of wish that... I had been your grandfather. Yes. 
What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, you see, Mr. Blustery, if I had been your grandfather... Yes? Well, that means, of course, that I would have married your grandmother. I you know that. that lovely, lovely lady, Grandma Bluster. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Yes. yes you know, as a matter of fact, I... Uh, yes, my boy? I noticed something in your hand here. This... Oh. Uh, oh, yes. Couldn't, uh, perchance, mayhap... Perhaps. ...be uh, another picture of Grandma Bluster, could it? Well, that seems odd, Mr. Bluster, because if you remember the other day... When you gave me the picture of Grandma yeah. Bluster, yeah. you said it was the very last picture that you had. Yes, I, I did, Buffalo Bud, but... Oh, oh I, I know, I know. This yeah. morning, you just happened to find another picture of Grandma Bluster. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yes. How did you know? How did and you the that? other day, when you gave a picture to Clarabelle... Yes. ...and another one to the Flubadub... Yes. ...and another one to the Flubadub Junior... Uh, 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 it how just so... Know? Well, I, uh, how did you know? Yeah, well, now, look. I know what happened. You just happened to find three more of the same pictures. Is that yeah, right? Uh, now, blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute. What? I demand to be heard. You haven't even given me a chance to say a oh, word. Right, not Mr. one word. There's only one thing you're going to have a chance to say. <laughs> you are going to tell us what you did with those 25 seltzer bottles. No. No, 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 and no. No. Uh, no, I won't tell you. The cells are about to mine, do you hear? Yeah. Buffalo Bob, they're all mine, all yeah. 25 of them, and I'll do whatever I want with them, and my business is my own. Right, now, look, talking. Mr. Bluster, now wait a minute. What are you doing with those 25 seltzer bottles? Uh, piddle de punk. Oh, answer me, Mr. Bluster. Piddle de punk. Now, look, we know that you have got 25 seltzer bottles that belong to Clarabelle. Piddle de punk. Tanner in the Flubber Dubs cage. Piddly punk. And five are in Flubadub Junior's cage. Piddly punk. And you're hiding the other ten somewhere. <gasps> Piddly punk. Yeah, now look. <laughs> Those bottles belong to Clarabelle, and we want them back. Piddly punk, piddly punk. <laughs> now, Mr. Bluster, now punk. wait a minute. What are you laughing uh, uh, at? What am I laughing at? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Bob, Bob. I have news for you, my boy. Huh? Yes. Bend the near. Bubble Bob, the bottles do not belong to Clarabelle. Now wait, they belong now to wait, me, me, wait, me, 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 me. Clarabelle, look, you're never going to squirt again, are you? For sure. Huh. There you see, of course not, Mr. Buster. Huh. Clarabelle has promised never again to squirt. Oh, really? And he's also kept his promise perfectly. Uh -huh. But the bottles still belong to Clarabelle. Oh, really? And I want Clarabelle to have them back. I mean, maybe, maybe Clarabelle could sell them or something. Uh, but, but in any case, you're going to return those bottles to Clarabelle. Oh! Not and watch who you're pushing. No. You seem to forget, Junior, that the bottles now belong to little bitsy me. Now, look, I don't believe it, Mr. Bluster. I say they belong to my pal Clarabelle. They're mine. Mine, 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 and I'll prove it. Clarabelle, Clarabelle and I made a very fair and square trade. I gave Clarabelle one picture of Grandma Bluster. Clarabelle took the picture happily, and in exchange, Clarabelle gave me uh, those 25 seltzer bottles. Clarabelle kept the picture, I kept the seltzer bottles. And I'm gonna keep them! Oh. Anyway, oh, calm down, Clarabelle. Clarabelle, my boy, I didn't rob your seltzer bottles. I made a fair trade. You and I talked the whole thing through first, didn't we? And you agreed that you wanted to make the trade. All right. So we made it. Now, you wait a minute, Mr. Bluster. I'll wait. It but... was not a fair trade. Clarabelle Tell said that he would give you 25 seltzer bottles, right? Right. And Clarabelle gave you 25 seltzer bottles, right? Right. And you said that you would give him a picture of Grandma Bluster, right? Oh, right. But you didn't give it to him. I did so, now, I did so, I did. wait a minute. You did not give him a picture of Grandma Bluster. I did. You. Oh, I did so. I, I gave him Grandma Bluster. No, you didn't, Mr. Bluster. You gave him Whistler's mother. Grandma Bluster. Whistler's mother. Grandma Bluster. Whistler's mother. Grandma Bluster. A Bluster. Oh, oh Whistler. Bluster. Oh, piddle de punk. I'm not admitting anything. All right, now, Mr. Bluster, now. Huh. All right, you don't have to admit anything. Oh, now, yeah. we know the truth. Oh, and yeah. you did not keep your end of the bargain. Ooh. Now, you didn't give Clarabelle the picture that you promised to give him, so you spoiled the trade. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, it wasn't a real trade, and to prove it, yes. instead of your yelling like this, I'm going to call in a sheriff. Yeah, but, uh...
A sheriff? Yeah, and then we'll let somebody from outside the circus decide this thing. Oh, but, uh, somebody fair and square, we're gonna get Sheriff Lanky Lou. <laughs> and if Sheriff Lou says that you should keep the bottles, well, then you can keep them. Oh, but good. Yes. if Sheriff says that you should give them back to Clarabelle, then, then Clarabelle gets them. Uh, no, no, now, no, no, no. that's the only no, fair no. way, Mr. No, Buster. No, 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 I... No. Well, all right. Well, I still say that I'm right. I'm always right. I'm Phineas T. Yeah, and, and, and we'll call you later when, when Lanky Lou arrives. <laughs> All that Mr. Bluster kids. We're going to get those bottles back, believe me, and don't you worry about it. Because a man has to keep his word, doesn't he, kids? Yeah! When a man promises something, he's got to keep his word, and Mr. Bluster did not. Well, look, we'll forget all about Mr. Buster for just a second. Say, I want to ask you kids something. Now, look, all of you look at me for a half a second and tell me something. Now, who is it who says, kids, I'm America's number one private eye? Who says that? The inspector, that's right. And say, do you know what the inspector's been doing lately, kids? He's been investigating to find out how many talking cereals there are. And say... The inspector says there's only one in all the world, and it's our good friend, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. And he says that he's going to tell you about it just as soon as we do our Kellogg's Rice Krispies march. Is that right, inspector? Right. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Yes, sir. All they show. Can't turn down and let my joke. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice uh, Yes, sir. Kellogg's <laughs> Rice Krispies. Oh, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Tomorrow, keep your breakfast date with good Rice Krispies. Boy, they're great. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Now, add milk or cream, that's all you do. And listen to him talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Ah, boys and girls, Kellogg's Rice Krispies are good for you, too. And I know they're America's only talking cereal because I am America's number one private eye. Ah, uh, sir, that's right, Inspector. Thank you. And say, now, don't forget, kids, if you want to have fun eating breakfast, you ask your mom to get you Kellogg's Rice Krispies right away, won't you? Yeah. Ah, that's the way. Now, look, Clarabelle, <laughs> we definitely have got a problem. We've got to go out. I want you to go out for me and find Lanky Lou. Will you do that, please? Now, I have no idea where he is, but I know that he's in town somewhere. And we need him today. Yes, and Clarabelle, he's very tall. You're right. And you'll see him, I hope. Yes. Fine. Okay, All right. you Thanks, go Clarabelle. Now. Bye. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, and look, Buffalo Baba, while we're waiting, you know, the princess and I have made up some new riddles for the kids, so how about our riddle game? Well, all right. Say, kids, would you like to try some riddles with the princess and me? Oh, I get the presents. You get the presents. Okay. All set, princess. And now, look, you boys and girls at home, you play along with us. You try to get the answers. See if you can get them quicker than the kids in the gallery do. And say, now, all you boys and girls, you be all ready to raise your hand. Now, only raise your hand when you think that you know the right answer. Only raise your hand when you think you know the right answer. All right, the first one with the right answer wins. Go ahead, how do you start it? Okay, kids. Oh, hi, daddle, daddle. Let's tell a rattle. Let's tell a funny one. You begin and then I'll come in and we'll all have a barrel of fun. Oh, and here's the first riddle, kids. Now, what kind of a band never plays music? Who knows, what kind of a band never plays music? This little girl. What kind of a band that never plays music? doesn't ever want to. A band that doesn't want to? No. No, that isn't right. How about this little girl right in front of you? Sweetie, what kind of a band never plays music? A banjo. <laughs> no, this is just a band, not a not a band, a band. Uh, this uh, this little boy over here, panda? Which, what, what is it? Panda? A panda. No, not panned. Not what kind of a panned. What kind of a band? This little boy. A rubber band. A rubber band. Oh. And stand up and tell us what's your name, Sonny. Norman Burson. All right, Norman. You've got a nice present. Oh, what have we got I for him? Look, Buffalo Bob, what we've got for Norman. A beautiful Howdy Doody watch. And you know, kids, this is the Howdy Doody watch with 
The movable eyes. Yes, sir. Oh, isn't that wonderful? All right. Well, here you are, little fella, for the rubber band. Nice going. Oh. And how about you, Princess? You said you had a riddle, too, for the oh, kids. Oh, I do, Bob. All right. Go right ahead. Listen, boys and girls. Hi, diddle, diddle. Let's tell a riddle. Let's tell a funny one. You begin, then I'll come in, and we'll all have a barrel of fun. Okay? Now, my riddle is, why is a dog like a penny. Why is a dog like a penny? Who knows? Why is a dog like a penny? This little girl was first. Because, she, because he's as heavy as a penny. A dog's as heavy as a penny? <laughs> a dog's a little heavier than a penny, but that's not the right answer, Dolly. Uh, this little boy up here was second. Sonny, why? They call a uh, dog's penny. Penny. You mean uh, because someone might call a dog Penny? Oh. No, that's not the right. Now, wait a minute. This little fellow up here is all excited about this one. What do you think, Sonny? It has a head and a tail. It has a head and a tail. Well, now, that's exactly right, because there's a head on one side, and there's a tail on the other, isn't oh, there? Oh, good. Well, sure there is. What's your name, Sonny? Elliot Mankiewicz. All right, what do we got for Elliot? Look what we have. Oh, isn't is he going really? to enjoy this? Now, yeah. watch this, Elliot. Now, watch. Keep your eye on this. Watch this, kids. Look and he never misses getting up. <laughs> he nearly did, though, didn't he? Yeah, you better be careful there, fella. All right, here you are, Sonny, and there you are. Okay, well, nice going, Princess. Now, look, that's about all the time we have for riddles today, but uh, howdy, look, all the kids over here in the gallery tried so hard. You know that? Oh, yeah, and, and we have a present for everyone in the peanut gallery, kids. Oh, yes, sir, kids, right after the show. We're going to give out copies of our brand new December issue of the Howdy Doody comic book. Featuring wonderful stories about Dilly Dally and, and Mr. Bluster and, and the Flava Dob. Ah, yes, sir. Kids, we'll have a copy for you right after the show, okay? Oh, yes, Clarabelle. Did, did you find Blanky Lou? Oh, you did. Is he going to be here? Movie. Oh, you mean after the movie? Oh, good. All right, then, listen, kids. We're going to wait until after the movie. Lanky Lou will be here with Mr. Bluster, and we'll settle our problem. Yes, Clarabel, what? Now it's time. Here. Oh, Halo. Oh, kids, I know. Clarabel wants to remind me that now it's time for us to remind Howdy about Halo. So let's all say Halo Howdy real loud. Come on, kids. Halo! Oh, wow. Well, Halo and Howdy Doody and Halo to you, kids. Halo, everybody, halo. Halo is the shampoo that glorifies our hands. So halo, everybody, halo. Halo, shampoo, halo. Oh, yes, sir, and kids, today, halo shampoo, the shampoo with not a bit of soap in it, presents a brand new halo movie. And boy, it's the squalest thing you ever saw. It's all about Sir Lancelot and the dragon. Ho ho! Hello, everybody. Halo. Halo Shampoo presents the true story of Sir Lancelot and the dragon. <laughs> hey, look at yonder maiden. A lady in distress. To the rescue. <laughs> Fair lady, your slightest wish is our command. What causes your grief? Look, my hair. What evil spell has dulled your tresses? I know not. I just washed it, too, with this. With that? Don't you know soaping dulls hair? Halo glorifies it. Halo is not a soap or oily cream, so it can't leave a dulling soap film. Made with a patented ingredient, Halo needs no special rinse. And quickly removes loose dandruff. my hair so soft and shining and wonderfully easy to manage. Why not glorify your hair with wonderful Halo Shampoo? Halo Shampoo, Halo! Oh, and kids, that dragon certainly knew what he was talking about when he said that soaping dulls hair, but Halo glorifies it. And kids, Halo Shampoo does just that. Halo washes your hair so shiny and clean, so quick and easy, that it's honest to goodness glorious. So kids, when mom goes shopping tomorrow, you'll be sure to have her get for you Halo Shampoo. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, Clarabelle, you start up the scope doodle. That's the way. And Howdy, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you, Buffalo Bob, I'm, I'm going to make sure that Mr. Bust is right here where I'm standing when Lanky Lou arrives to decide who gets the seltzer bottles. 
Atta boy, howdy. Oh, and say, Clarabelle, before you show the movie. Now, kids, look. We have added the second piece to our jigsaw puzzle. Now, you watch. Tomorrow we're going to add another one, and it's going to mean important news for everybody next week. And now, kids, it's time for our old-time movie. So come on in, boys and girls, so you can get a good look-see at the movie that we started to show you yesterday. Now, this was the one about our buddy, Harry Langdon. And Harry Langdon, he was out in the field. You see, uh, Harry and his buddy were both invited over to his buddy's girlfriend's house. Now, it so happens that uh, Harry was a, a buck private, and his good friend was a sergeant. And the sergeant had an invitation from his girlfriend to come over for dinner and bring a friend. And the sergeant was also told that he should bring anybody that he wanted to bring. So the sergeant looked all over for someone, and he just couldn't find anybody. So he brought along Harry, and Harry and the sergeant went over to see the sergeant girlfriend, and they had a very, very lovely dinner over there. But as they finished dinner, it seems that uh, a siren blew, and all the boys had to get back to duty. So Harry is right now out in the field. Doesn't like the looks of this. Two legs sticking up, and look who it is. It's his buddy, the sergeant. So the sergeant says, tell him what I want you to do, Harry. I want you to go over there to Suicide Post. And Harry says, well, I know I'm the man of the I better I will. So Harry goes over to this very spooky place, and the sergeant says, good luck to you, Harry. So Harry is on his way over to Suicide Post. Very, very spooky place. Look out, Harry. Somebody's following Harry with a searchlight. Boy, that one just missed him. He says, no, maybe I better not ask for any more trouble. Oh, they find Harry on top of suicide post. They've got the searchlight on him. Oh, did you see that shell? Just missed Harry. Look out, Harry, here comes another. Look out, Harry. Harry, boy, look out, here comes another shell at you, Harry. Duck. And... Boy, he just got out of that one in time. Oop. He says, uh-oh, that's where my foot was. So look out, Harry. Harry. Oh. Suicide post was knocked over, but thank heaven, Harry got out okay. Just then, Harry was about to lunge that bayonet into this man, and look who it is. Harry saved the colonel's life. And the colonel was so proud of Harry that he promoted him from buck private to a lieutenant, a first lieutenant. He couldn't play second. They didn't have a part written. So now, uh-oh, Harry went over right away to show off his new uniform to the sergeant's girlfriend. And as Harry gets over there, he happens to notice that the sergeant is there. And Harry says, aha, you've got to respect me now. You've got to salute me, see? I'm a lieutenant. But the sergeant says, yeah, I'll respect you. Oh, 
Did you see what happened? <laughs> Just as the sergeant was about to hit <laughs> Harry, the colonel came by again, and the sergeant hit the colonel. So, just then, we see them again in the theater. The sergeant, if you remember, kids, was about to rob the theater when Harry Langdon came by. And they did so much talking about the army days that Harry stalled until the policeman got there. And you see what happens, kids. The policemen are there in time to catch the sergeant, we hope. No, the policeman missed getting the sergeant. Well, anyway, here's the girlfriend. The girlfriend who was originally the sergeant's girlfriend. And then Harry's girlfriend is now wheeling two fellas down the street, and look who the two fellas are. Harry and the sergeant in a baby carriage. As the armistice parade goes on, and the boys come marching home. Well, that was kind of a silly movie, but I think it was a very, very good one. Say, you know, kids, now having your hair washed is something that, well, it's something that just has to be done whether you like it or not. But say, kids, look over here. Now here, kids, I have a bottle of Halo shampoo. And believe me, kids, this is one of the easiest ways that I can think of to wash your hair really, really clean. Yes, sir, kids, Halo gets your hair so clean, so fast that, well, it's really fun having your hair washed with Halo shampoo. So Halo, everybody, Halo. Glad you're here, and, and, and Sheriff, I, I'll go get Mr. Buster right away. Now, you stay here. Okay, fine. Say, uh, Lou, oh, do you know I this whole story? Yes, indeed, I do. You yes. do? Well, now, yes. look, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. You see what happened is this. Now, first, yeah. Mr. Buster gave me a picture. And then me, and then me, And then Carabelle, and, and, and then the pictures. princess. Yeah? And he said that the picture was of Grandma Bluster. Oh, Grandma I Bluster. Grandma, Grandma Bluster, Bluster. Bluster. Actually, that, yeah. That's what he told us, see? But it was really... Whistler's mother. Oh. Whistler's mother. See? Right. Mother, Whistler's see mother. Uh -huh. So, actually, what happened is, Bluster fooled us. I see, indeed he did. I yes, see now, he, he tricked Clarabelle out of 25 seltzer bottles. Now, what's your decision? Well, now, I just can't decide, so I hear Bluster's side of the story. Oh. Oh, here he is now. Here he is. Uh, I say the bottles are mine. Mine, 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 mine. Is that all you got to say? Boom, yes. Yes, they're mine. Mine, mine, I say. If I was smart enough to fool Clarabelle, then I win. I win. I win, I win, I win. Do you hear me? Well, man, I've heard the case. Yes, sir, and Sheriff Lanky Lou has decided. Mr. Bluster, you were smart. But you know something? The man you fooled was yourself. Yes. Now listen, folks, let me explain what I meant by that. Yeah? It's against the law to give out a picture of a sweet lady like Whistler's mother yeah. and tell people that it's Grandma Bluster. Yeah. So, Clarabelle, yeah. those sorts of butlers are yours. Hey! Oh, hi, Clarabelle! NBC Television.